Grand Theft Auto is the ultra-violent open-world video game series that has defined a digital generation. Since its original release in 1997, the game has also coincided with an age of cynicism and hopelessness among visions of apparent prosperity and opulence in the real world. When the top-down, spy-hunter on steroids moved to glorious, pixelated, third-person mayhem in Liberty City, gang warfare and riots in San Andreas, to the window-smashing ragdoll physics in GTA 4, the stage was set for another dimension of social commentary in 2013 when Rockstar Games released GTA V. The game is a Mobius strip of desire fulfillment, an endless, interwoven storyline that keeps users engaged in an onslaught of cartoonish sex, drugs, and violence. Online play and the addition of mods and shark cards has created a culture that seems to relish in corrupt decadence. However, under the surface lives a shockingly harsh critique of modern American society. The script itself acts as commentator, gently poking the audience in the side with a gatling gun of sarcastic nihilism. From crude billboards and absurd radio commercials, That's the drink of the Alcohol. What's up? For real motherfuckers. You being marketed at now, homie. To oddly self-aware dialogue, GTA 5 puts sticky bombs on the fourth wall and blows it to pieces. What's the moral of the third highest selling video game of all time, you ask? Capitalism is destroying us all. Go to college. Then you can rip people off and get paid for it. It's called capitalism. Michael DeSanta is a middle-aged married father that coasts through life on delusions of grandeur and a deal with the feds that keeps him rich and free after a heist gone bad. Like many American fathers, Michael has spent his life focused on making money, in the hopes that it will somehow save his loveless, manipulative marriage, Oh, I hate you too, honey. and raise his lazy, attention-seeking kids for him. Your son, James, he's a good kid. He's a good kid? A, a good kid? Why? Does he help the fucking poor? No. He sits on his ass all day, Smoking dope and jerking off while he plays that fucking game. If that's our standard for goodness, then no wonder this country's screwed. Michael is our poster boy for American white privilege and affluence, or the bourgeoisie. You see, Michael's state is not natural. He's not old money, original bloodline rich. We're trailer trash, you and me. We were taught to do this. He took the opportunities he had. These were the opportunities I had. Which were inherently aggressive and manipulative. These privileges paid off, and now he believes the system works out for hardworking people like him. Thing is, his situation is rare, and his actions are completely psychopathic. And where did these opportunities get you, Michael? They got me right fucking here! The end of the road! With a big house and a useless kid, and I'm stuck talking to you because no one else gives a shit! Oh, I'm living the dream, baby! And that dream is fucked! It is fucking fucked! Despite his safe existence, he returns to crime to rekindle his passion for life. The money is not his addiction. Like a gambler, it's the thrill of the acquisition that keeps him coming back. Oh, a sense of overriding futility is a vital part of the process. Embrace it. Oh yes, he's very sensitive. When he gets his feelings hurt, he's devastated. Trevor Phillips lives by his own rules, hates the government, and loves America. Considered dead by authorities and most of society, he lives out of the public eye in a trailer upstate. He sells drugs, rapes his employees, and kills his competition. He is our jaded libertarian, anarcho-capitalist in spirit, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, as long as there's a paycheck involved. No government means no oversight. Pure freedom is a means to unadulterated violence. He is our stereotype of white privilege in poverty. You're worse than they are. A paid thug of a corrupt legal system rounding up agitators for the ruling autocracy? A puppet on a power trip. I just wonder who's got their hand up your ass. Whoa! Hold on there, socialist Santa. If you want an anarchy off, I will take you down any day. I wreak indiscriminate mayhem on an hourly basis. And secondly, no one has a hand up my ass. Would you like to look? Listen, nobody's more anti-establishment than me, old man. I hate authority, so watch your tone. Oh, I'm sorry. Hired mensch of the dictatorship, did daddy not love you? Despite these inclinations, he is fully 1312. The LSPD disgusts me! 
it's not me. I mean, there's some bad apples in the department, but any accusation of a racist culture, uh... You want to bullshit me? You can bullshit the freeway! We do community outreach, but we have minority quotas. Yeah, 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 your nice dick got a minority quota. Unless you take... Look, please! We come so far in the last two decades! Openly queer. You're spooning me next time. And for open borders. Come one, come all, I say. This country's got bigger problems to deal with. There are even moments of environmentalism. What the fuck have we done to this earth? Then there's the Paletto score set up mission speech. Leading up to the second heist, in spectacular fashion, Michael develops a scathing synopsis of Trevor's personality. The impassioned speech gets to the heart of how anarchist rebellion gets repackaged by capitalism for a dirtier aesthetic. Think about it. Where you live. Sandy Shores, you precious ass. I'm sorry there ain't a place nearby for you to get your colonics. Right, but why are you out here? It's off the grid. We're away from it all. It's somewhere real and authentic. This is America! And real people ain't been priced out yet. Yeah, well what if it gets gentrified? Then I'll fucking move. Okay, what about the way you dress? What about it? I don't give a shit what I wear. No, no, no. If you don't give a shit, you wear clean clothes that fit. So yours are all a little out there, you know, a little wacky. Whatever's in the shop is what I get. Jesus, what, what is this? It's not an absence of taste, T. It's the opposite of taste. You should be a stylist. And then there's the tattoos, the hair, the weird music. The funny toys, the niche drugs, the everything. What the fuck are we talking about? You are a hipster. What? You're a hipster. I hate hipsters. Classic hipster denial. I abhor hipsters. I eat them for fun. <laughs> hipsters love saying they hate hipsters. What I really fucking do! Self-hatred. Common hipster affliction. Why will be because I'm living out here away from the bean machines and the bankers? You're gentrifying! Soon, the skinny jeans will show up, then the skinny lattes, and then the bankers. And you'll be somewhere else, starting the cycle all over again. Maybe you're not a classic garden variety hipster. You're what the hipsters aspire to be. You, Trevor, are the proto-hipster. A tea, baby. I'm just trying to tell you I care about you. You care about yourself. I need someone real in my life. Then there's Franklin, the millennial. Totally Cancerian in nature, the man just wants to sit at home and smoke with Bay. Mentally exhausted by menial labor. Still doing chores. And seeming to suffer from executive dysfunction. He finds himself caught up in pointlessly dangerous scenarios just to stay busy. Franklin does a great job of representing the struggling middle class or proletariat, living the gig economy. Man, one of these days I gotta get paid. Strong and aware, yet unable to find fulfillment. Why am I still doing the grunt work? Desperately seeking guidance and connection with others, but falling short due to limited core beliefs around materialism. I don't care if you got money now, don't you get it? That ain't what I was looking for. Not then, not now, not ever. I know it ain't important, just let me take you somewhere nice, all right? And finding comfort in illicit substances and activities out of sheer boredom. I'll see you next time, all right? Bye. There's a certain level of psychological programming being described here that both motivates and paralyzes the victim. This spell keeps us from expressing anything that doesn't come with a profit, so much so that huge aspects of our psyche and personality atrophy, alienating us from ourselves and the human experience. This ability to shut down emotional and intuitive centers of the brain is taught and rewarded by society at a very young age, encouraging the next generation to produce before any understanding is offered. So who the fuck don't you like today? Guys called Isaac Penny, ruthless vulture capitalist, about to take a controlling interest in Vapid Motor Company and sell thousands of workers down the river. In the end, the game comes to full choose-your-own-adventure glory, and upon selecting the canonical story, and by far the most satisfying death wish option, we get a final message from the game on the methods of capitalism run amok. You know, Devin, the way I see it, and hey, I'm no intelligent businessman like you, but the way I see it, there's two great evils that bedevil American capitalism, the type that you practice. Number one, 
is outsourcing. You paid a private company to do your dirty work for you. And then you underpaid that company because you thought you were big enough and bad enough that you didn't have to play by the rules. Oh, number two, offshoring your profits. Offshoring? Oh, it's horrible. You wouldn't want to be sent offshore just to save a little money, would you, T? No, Franklin? I wouldn't. Oh, no, I ain't would going you nowhere. No, see, but we know your opinions on the matter, Devin. Keep your problems the fuck out of America, huh? <laughs> In this instance, when he puts it like that, it makes sense. Throughout the story, there are myriad examples of the creator's quiet distaste for blind consumerism and greed. This anxious ennui, demonstrated through casual acts of torture, murder, and robbery, is the kindling that allows the all-encompassing fire of late-stage capitalism to smolder. The fuel is greed, but the fire itself, the fire, is purpose. Now here's a video of a crazy person literally comparing Grand Theft Auto to capitalism. How do I get my counterparts to understand what I mean by capitalism or to understand what I mean by conservatism or to understand what I mean by X, Y, or Z? So I asked him, like, do you play Grand Theft Auto? And he's like, yes, I play Grand Theft Auto. I said, okay, so what happens if you don't do missions on Grand Theft Auto? You don't get money. If you don't get money, you don't buy the crib. If you don't buy the crib, you can't have locations and safe spots. You can't have a place to duck this favorite car you just got. You can't participate in the game itself if you're not out actually doing the missions which allow you to get the money to actually finance the rest of the game. So in that, that is capitalism. And that is really a very effective metaphor for American capitalism. What a surprise! Here come the fascists! As I was doing research for this essay, I came across a place on the map I had never encountered. It's called Dignity Village. Dignity Village is a small settlement on the north side of the map with a distinct anti-capitalist message. Very distinct. If you thought the writers of this game weren't thinking about the potential for revolution in late-stage capitalist America, here's your proof. Beyond the political slogans and makeshift commune, there's something hidden within this remote desert town. Discovered in a video by Swaxi, there's a particular tent that provides some clue as to who is leading this revolution. Nico Belik, the protagonist of GTA 4. There are many references to the Yugoslavian rebel in the game, but all lead to dead ends. Swaxi spends a ton of time exploring the game and has found some very interesting clues involving real world locations and even Eastern European religious iconography. There was a, an Eastern European guy making moves in Liberty City, but. Nah, he went quiet. What adds credence to this theory is that Michael Hollick, the voice actor that plays Nico, actually spoke out against unfair labor practices after Rockstar paid him a mere $100,000 for his integral role in the game that made over $500 million in its first month alone. Is Dignity Village a nod to Nico and Hollick's stand against corporate avarice, nearly stripped from the game as punishment brought down by imperialist forces? Everything else is fake too. The titties aren't real, and the opportunities aren't opportunities at all. To seize them, you end up in so much debt that you'll be a slave for the rest of your life. Dan Hauser, GTA's head writer, has quietly watched while Rockstar continues to rake in millions of dollars years after the game's release. Yet his story speaks volumes about the slow freefall of American culture and how bleak the reality of it seems to so many of us. He doesn't provide any answers. I now leave you with a video I found while researching this topic titled, Anarcho-Capitalism in a Nutshell. Enjoy.